There are many interesting things to talk about in the readings today, but I'm going to focus on the second <coughs> the reading from the letter to the Philippians, because this reading contains the oldest hymn from the foundation of the church. So this hymn probably dates to within 10 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And you can already see the insights that the church is coming to as it begins to worship the risen Lord. There are two really important insights that we see in this hymn. First of all, we see that the church already had come to the insight that Jesus is God. So the hymn says, though he was in the form of God, he did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of. Rather, he emptied himself. So that's an early description of the incarnation of Jesus. Jesus lowered himself from his position as second person of the Trinity, of being in the form of God, to live a human life. So this hymn also praises Jesus as Lord. God exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, which is Lord in Greek is Kyrios. And the Greek title Kyrios was used to translate the name of God in the Greek Old Testament. The Jews would obviously not speak or write the name of God itself. So they used were Kyrios, Lord, to translate the name of God in the Greek Old Testament. So if you say Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saying Jesus Christ is God. So you see there very quickly after the resurrection, the church has come to know that Jesus is God. And the second important thing is that the church has come to see in Jesus that the nature of God is self-emptying love. So the hymn says, though he was in the form of God, he did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of. Rather, he emptied himself. And there's another interesting Greek word there for self-emptying. It's kenosis. And it occurs only in this one place in the whole New Testament. But it becomes incredibly important for understanding who God is. Theologians through the centuries came to see this as a description of the very nature of God. God is love. And that love is so generous that it desires to empty itself, to pour itself out, and extend itself out into the world. So this begins in eternity, when God the Father generates the Son, and love is extended out in the unity in the Holy Spirit. But that is not enough for God. God then creates the world and especially human beings in the divine image to extend the love even further. And then when the development of the world goes off course into sin, God empties himself again. The Son empties himself, coming into the sinful world to set it back on track. So the Philippians hymn says he humbled himself, becoming obedient even to the point of death on a cross. And that is still not enough. Jesus continues to empty himself into the Eucharist, into the bread and wine, so that we can be transformed by his power and cooperate with him in healing the world of sin. So God is this constant outpouring, self-emptying, self-giving love that goes on and on and on and on and on. So the Philippians hymn begins, have in you this same attitude that is in Christ Jesus. The world will be healed of sin when we take up this attitude of self-emptying love that Jesus has shown us. So first of all, we have to empty ourselves of our desire to be superior to others. Paul says, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. That means nobody is superior to anybody else. We're all united in one common mission. The world will be healed. 
heal when we stop defining ourselves by what we are against. We have to define ourselves by what we are for. And the main thing that we're supposed to be for is the image of God in us, in every human person. The church is the sacrament of union with God and the unity of humanity. Our mission is to unite humanity by defending the dignity of the image of God in every <coughs> human person. And this unity of humanity that we seek is not some lowest common denominator kind of unity, of mediocrity. Now sometimes you read in the news that parents sue schools who give their children a low grade because they say it might damage the self-image of their child. So I guess they're thinking it's okay for my child to be ignorant as long as he thinks that he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> but the church is not looking for some lowest common denominator, mediocre kind of unity. The church is to be a place where we seek a unity of excellence, where every person can really develop his or her gifts for the good of all. So the church has to be a place where we call each other to excellence in the Christian life, and we, where we are unified in this common goal of lifting every single person up to be the maximum that he or she can be. And then, Paul says we have to empty ourselves of our insecure needs to look out for our own interests. He says, do nothing out of selfishness. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for your own interests, but also for those of others. The world is a tough place, there's no doubt about it. So we quickly learn that we have to defend ourselves and our interests. But especially now, Pope Francis is reminding us that humanity will be united only when we begin to be concerned for those who are at the very bottom of the social world. Only when we begin to be concerned for lifting up those who have less than ourselves. If we really trust in God's love and care for us, then we can look beyond our own needs and begin to care for others. So the world will only really be moving towards progress and unity when the poor are being lifted up. So one of the basic principles in the Bible is that God loves the poor. And why does God love the poor? Because if you want to make sure that the gospel is having an effect, you have to measure it from the lowest point, from the people who are at the bottom of the social ladder. So if we give ourselves to this, if we empty ourselves for the good of others, and especially for those who are below us, who have less than us, then we'll know this power of self-emptying, self-giving love, and then we'll share in God's life. And then we'll feel the fulfillment that comes from having that mission. It only took the first Christians 10 years to come to all these insights. It has taken us 2,000 years in counseling to really learn how to live them. But God is counting on us to complete the healing of the world. So have in you the same attitude that is in Christ Jesus.